I am but one of more than 100 beekeepers in Door County. The peninsula provides a good environment for honeybees, what with the many orchards, the growing number of vineyards, and more than 31,000 acres of protected lands. I don't know that I can articulate exactly why I keep bees. As far back as I can remember, I've been fascinated by their astonishingly complex democratic society and curious about their behavior. How thousands of individuals can think and communicate and work together as one organism. It's amazing. I can tell you this, they know and understand their place in the world far better than we know and understand ours. They have much to offer and we have much to learn from them regarding how society should work. I visit them most every day throughout the foraging months. I draw an energy from them. In the few brief minutes that I spend among them, it's always quiet and peaceful. It's become an important part of my routine. It grounds me, it slows me down, and it helps to calibrate my day, and more often than not, my attitude. There's this common misconception about honeybees, though, that they can be domesticated. <laughs> they can't. The honeybee is and will forever remain a wild animal. They cannot be tamed. They're not pets. They, in fact, don't need me. I'm not their keeper. That term, beekeeper, I've always been uncomfortable with it. Sure, I provide a place for them to live and I tend to them periodically, but hell, I don't keep them from anything. I am merely a steward, a benevolent interloper with whom they are tolerant. Now, many keepers that I know dismiss the importance of the old school method of learning to read their bees. I don't know if they just don't have the patience for it, or simply can't be bothered. There's a lot to be learned from a honeybee colony merely by observing it, their subtle behavior in and around the hive. It's not always necessary to rip the roof off their house and ransack their brood nest. And I've come to rely heavily on the sight and sound and smell within an apiary to assess the needs of a particular hive and determine if it's in harmony, if it's queen right and balanced or queenless, if it's sickly, stressed from drought or dearth or infested with disease or parasites or, as I've noticed over the past few days, behavior in a couple of these hives that tells me that they're making final preparations to leave, establish a new home, taking with them about half the colony's worker bees and the queen. In other words, swarm. So I'm going to attempt to head off this drama by splitting one of those hives into two distinct colonies. This ruse, if successful, will convince them that they've already swarmed. Ah, but it's a bit tricky and time sensitive. Because once the instinct to swarm is triggered, about two weeks in advance of the actual spectacle, it's difficult, if not impossible, to stop. And the closer they get to actually leaving, the harder it is to get them to stay. But if you catch them early enough... One might think it's easy to outsmart a honeybee. And you'd be wrong about that. You have to outsmart about 30,000 honeybees because they are of one mind, a hive mind. I've read countless books and articles on honeybee biology and physiology, the many nuances of their behavior, 
and the art of successfully stopping a colony from swarming, but apparently the bees don't read the same books that I do. First, a little maintenance. Some sugar water reserves I mixed up for a hive that I split yesterday and placed into a five-frame nucleus box, or nuke. A nuke is like having a single-wide trailer in your yard until the colony can build up their numbers and move into the double-wide. A few puffs of cool smoke in and around the hive will let them know that I'm here. The smoke doesn't harm the bees, but it does distract them and it interferes with their ability to detect the pungent alarm pheromone that's emitted by the vigilant garden bees. It's so strong, in fact, that I can smell it. It smells like banana. Now yesterday, during an inspection, I identified two frames in here that had several ripe queen cells propagated by the worker bees. As these queens prepare to emerge from their cells, the strength of their pheromone grows more powerful every day, competing with that of the reigning queen inside the hive. To preserve and defend the life of her current majesty, a coterie of worker bees prepare her to leave. They prevent her from laying eggs and put her on a diet to slim her down so that she's able to fly again. As it is now, she's too heavy. Then a day or two before the new queen cells simultaneously emerge. A contingent of about half the population are going to take to the air at once, coaxing the queen to go with them. They'll steer her to safety in a frenetic cloud of about twelve to 15,000 bees, and they'll cluster a short distance away, usually dangling from a nearby tree branch, while scout bees explore the neighborhood in search of a new, suitable home. This peanut shell looking thing is a prime example of a ripening queen cell. It's many times larger than a worker bee cell, so it's easy to spot. I'll move this frame, along with its developing brood and all the nurse bees that are on it, into a nuke box. I've already primed the nuke box with a frame of comb and a frame without comb so that the wax makers and the comb builders will have something to do in their new home. Plus, it'll provide a place for the queen to lay when she emerges and returns from her mating flight. She'll need plenty of room, too. She lays up to about 1,500 eggs a day. I'm looking for the queen here on this frame. I want to make sure I don't move her. I saw her yesterday in the bottom box, so I isolated her there using a simple screen called a queen excluder. It allows just enough room for the worker bees to pass in between the two boxes, but it's too narrow for the queen to fit through. She's too large. I'll add this second frame, too. It has a half a dozen or so ripening queen cells on it, along with other developing brood, and lots of nurse bees. By the looks of them, I'd say these queens will be emerging within the next three or four days. Now, to make sure they have enough food resources for themselves and for the developing brood, I'll drop in a frame of honey and pollen. And to make sure they remain strong, I'll need to shake a few thousand more bees into the box. You'll notice that when I do, they don't all go in, and that's okay. The older house bees and foragers are non-essential at this point, and they will immediately fly back to the parent hive. The young nurse bees, unable to fly, will instinctively crawl back into the nuke box to cover and protect and warm all the open brood that's there. There's this hierarchical division of labor within a honeybee colony dependent upon age. 
And what a nucleus colony needs are plenty of nurse bees. They're the youngest. And their duties lie solely with tending developing brood. There are few things in the bee yard that can create as much panic as to have a couple of fully mature, highly weaponized honeybees frantically bouncing off your face inside your veil. Stings to the face are especially painful. I managed to free them without pissing them off. I suspect they climbed up under the loose elastic of my jacket. I can't leave the bee yard in its current disarray, so it's time to improvise. I've sealed off the entrance to this nucleus colony, and I'll add some sugar water for good measure. I'll have to move it in a couple of days to another location a few miles away. Make sure they don't return, when they're able, to their old hive. The only remaining chore now is to remove the queen excluder from the parent hive. I'll give her back free reign of the place. I'll backfill the frames that I removed and make sure that everyone's tucked in nice and snug. It was a good two and a half hours spent with the girls today in the bee yard. I'll leave them alone now for a couple of days so that they can recover from all the trauma that I've inflicted upon them. Give them a chance to settle in, get back to business, prepare for winter. And as for whether or not my efforts to fend off an impending swarm are successful, well, stay tuned. Thanks for watching, everybody. And please, if you find this content useful or of interest, please hit the subscribe button below. Hit the like button. Give her a thumbs up for me while you're there. And feel free to leave a comment. I do appreciate hearing from you. And until next time, we'll see you down the road.